Sixteen years have passed, and yet Jack has received no resolution. Got to get back. Back to the show. Samurai Jack. So we watched Samurai Jack Season 5, and we fucking loved it. But yeah. that's what we're here to talk about. That's right. On a very special Manga Mavericks at Movies, we're not talking about a movie. We're talking about a TV show, the most recent season of Samurai Jack, coming back to the airways after 16 years and 15 years in story to complete his journey. Adult Swim did it. They did it, fam. <laughs> they got Gandhi on board. They got him to make ten episodes that worked like as one long serial movie. And it was glorious. It had a few bumps in the road, mm. but overall, totally satisfying. It was great fun watching it every week. To talk about our experience, uh, every Saturday night, we got a bunch of friends coming over. We watched Samurai Jack together. Mm. We all had a rambunctious great time doing it. So it was a great social experience. I think everyone can agree that, like, the speculation of, like, where, how Jack's story would end, like, following that ride, it was, like, it was a great intense. experience. Like, yeah. It, it was kind of fun. And from here on, we're going to get in spoilers, so if you, for some ungodly, unchristianly reason, <laughs> you haven't seen this final season, leave! Out with you! <laughs> yeah. You are banished! Seriously, go watch one of the best cartoons ever made if you haven't already, but... Since those of you who have left have left or don't care, let's let's get into the actual plot. Right. So, so first, we should probably introduce ourselves. We've got me, your regular Manga Mavericks, Maverick, Lomar Miyasha. With me is uh, We Lord GTZ. Yeah. And, of course, recurring Manga Mavericks at Movies guest, Ethan. Yeah, uh, I don't really have anything special. I just, I love this show. Mm -hmm. As do we all. Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk a little bit about... Our memories of Samurai Jack, uh, watching it, like, the original four-season run back in the day. I didn't have TV, <laughs> so, <laughs> that, hear me out. So, I did the poor, poor man's thing, back when this was still a thing. I watched the episodes on YouTube in, like, oh, yeah. three parts back in the day. Back, back in, when you can still do that. Yeah, <laughs> like, mid-2000s, I think it must have been. Yeah. <laughs> and it's... There's nothing like it. I, the creator, Gary Tartakowski, has done other stuff, and you can definitely feel his prints on some of the other stuff he's worked on, Semionic Titan, uh, that older season of Clone Wars, but there is nothing like Jack. The fight choreography is great. The character designs make... They just make me so happy, and they're beautiful. Um, the backgrounds... I, w I would honestly invest in a book, like a poster-sized book <laughs> of just backgrounds, and I would put them all over my walls. There has to be one of those out where I can't believe that they haven't printed one if Weird. there isn't. Yeah, seriously. But yeah, the artistic direction in Samurai Jack is nothing short of phenomenal. Gendy Tartakovsky and his crew really knew how to make use of their artistic limitations to, and use them in a way to craft a stylish show with phenomenal action that worked well under the constraints of what they were given in terms of a budget, and looked better than anything else out there, and created a mature, like, action show with a world unlike any other, with color design that few other shows could compare to. Mm. Just an incredible aesthetic that owes to a variety of influences, from ukiyo-e to all sorts of other, like, artistic styles mm. that just all comes together in a melting pot that is Samurai Jack. Kind of, like, the world of Samurai Jack is like a melting pot of all these aliens and weird creatures. And one of my favorite things about it is, well, you mentioned uh, various, what I'm going to assume, are anime, uh, manga influences, and you're yeah. probably right. At the same time, it has a very solid basis in American cartoons for how expressive and unique the designs are, and I love that so much. No two characters look alike. Yeah. I was specifically referring to kind of a classical Japanese style of art mm, uh, outside yeah. of anime manga. Like I can definitely see that. I was, I was going to bring up, people are going to say it's anime influenced, and I can see why you would say that. I humbly disagree. It has, you know, elements of Japanese B-movie schlock here and there, giant robots, uh, etc. But again, it's it's much more techno, futuristic, and fantasy than almost anything else I can think of. I, I'd yeah. say a lot of, like, the more anime-ish influences are less anime and more about Japanese, like, culture. Culture in general, yes, yes. yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it's where it also to a lot of cinematic influences to yeah. be more precise. There's a lot of references to uh, the works of Tarantino. There was a 300 inspired episode, and it was glorious. Yes, it was. Yeah. There is a lot of reference to like Kuros- the works of Kurosawa and of course uh, samurai movies that genre. Yeah, but. Yeah, Jack takes influence from a variety of cinematic and artistic uh, mediums mm. to kind of make it its own thing that mm. is really hasn't really been matched. There isn't another show that really looks like Jack and it excels nope. in the way it does. Mm. Yeah. So good. Well, now that we've gotten that over with, uh, in case you don't know, uh, just quick setup for the plot. There's this demon named Aku who wants to enslave the world, and the main character's father, once Aku returns, sends him out into the world be- to become the greatest warrior, trains with a bunch of different clans and in a bunch of different fighting styles. And that alone is an amazing sequence, but once he's done that, he returns to his village to um, free them from Aku, goes to fight Aku, and gets flung into the distant future where Aku's won, basically. And that's one of the cool things for me uh, right there is starting the show, the main villain's basically already won. You could, an argument could be made that the entire main character struggle is pointless, but he keeps going because... Aku is evil as law. The future <laughs> is Aku. And Jack <laughs> has to go back to the past to undo it. Yeah. But... Even though Aku has a tight grasp and his influence can be seen throughout the show in terms of how he's choking kind of the lives of so many innocent people, what's great about the original run of the show is how it shows Jack slowly over time becomes this inspirational force. Even by the end of the first season, we have the episode Aku's Fairy Tales, where a bunch of children have been inspired by the tales of Jack. Yeah. And they can even stand up to Aku and not be afraid of him because of their fate in Jack. Mm-hmm. So that's a great aspect about the show that, you know, Jack is bringing a light to the darkness of the world. And he's inspiring the people. He's giving them hope. And that really pays off beautifully in this current final season where Jack has been really jaded, really damaged by time, by repeat failures to go back to the past to find a time portal, and just seeing so many people he's tried to save over the years die. And he's in a pretty messed up state at the beginning of the season. And one of the great things about the new season is how we see that the hope that Jack inspired people still remains on, even if he himself lost hope. And that ultimately uh, ends up re-inspiring him to go back and finish the job. At the beginning of the season, not only has he given up, through time-space shenanigans, he has become effectively immortal, so he can't even die a natural death and is stuck in this hellish limbo, and they do a great job of portraying that. It's a little over the top at times, but overall they do a great job with how much it has affected him and brought him down, and he is not the man he once was. Yes. I mean, he is very psychologically disturbed. Yeah. He has PTSD. He is seeing, like, visions of, like, his father and his family burning in flames. He's seeing, like, images of, like, innocent people, like, being destroyed, dead. And, like, he is having horrible nightmares that are just tormenting him. And he's struggling to even wonder, like, what's the point? Because he... Physically has not aged, but mentally he has aged considerably, even more than the 50 year span probably. It has worn him down inside Mm -hmm. to the point where, like, he's struggling just to go on himself. At the beginning of the season, we get, we see that he's seen this image of this, like, shogun-esque ghost figure. Eventually it turns out uh, it's revealed that that figure is kind of like an aspect of his psyche that is kind of encouraging him to like kill himself because he has failed in his mission. Like the god of death. Essentially, essentially the god of death. Jack believes like From he is... From what little I know, it's some sort of Japanese deity that appears to samurai who have failed their purpose. It's like, alright, you fucked up, time to go, buddy. Yeah, and um, essentially. commit seppuku when that happens. Yeah, and we see that uh, halfway into the season, that eventually Jack is pushed up point where he almost goes through with that. So, yeah, Jack is really disturbed at the beginning of the season. A uh, large part of like his character arc is to not give up really, mm. not give up on his on the world, on his mission, but also on himself. 
he thinks he has failed and that he can't do anything. But he, cause he doesn't realize just how much he has already done for so many people over and the years. With some great parallels to not only his personal journey, but the overarching story. At the start of the season, Jack has lost his sword. And for those of you who don't know, that is the magical sword gifted to his father by the gods. That is basically the only thing that can kill Aku. And he done lost it. He's fighting with guns and armor and bombs. And it's very unjack like It's cool as hell. And the opening couple of episodes are amazing fight sequences. But it's not Jack. And they make that very clear. Yeah, he has really lost his way. Samurai Jack has never really been a samurai per se, because in classical definition, a samurai is a particular type of swordsman that served a feudal lord. Jack doesn't serve any lord, so he was always more like a ronin. Yeah. But he has like lost that code of honor that was very samurai-like. It, ha- it has more to do with his spiritual respect, not just for the world, but for himself that he mm-hmm. kind of lost, mm-hmm. and that he's kind of tries to ne- learn to regain game. And it's manifested brilliantly through this doppelganger Jack, who is, like, really <laughs> angry, like, really angrily drawn as well. Voices like Jack's, like, darker fears and darker thoughts about killing people, about, like, a sense of entitlement that he's owed something. Mm-hmm. And Jack ultimately realizes he needs to let go of that and reconnect with an inner peace in order to reclaim his sword. And so Jack's character arc in the season is very much a spiritual journey of, like, kind of of realizing what's important, finding that, holding on to it, and using it both figuratively and literally in the case of getting the sword back to defeat Aku at the very end. Yes. Pretty much finding his way again. Very aptly pumped. Yes. Don't don't lose your way. Don't Whoa. lose your way. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to the past. I don't fucking know that song, just that line. But interestingly though, um, not only as Sid was kind enough to mention, does the doppelganger Jack pop up, he gets more overdone and grotesque as the season goes on, and it's great what they do with that design. Because it is Jack, but it's also demonic. There's folds of skin being pulled back, the mouth gets bigger and bigger, the teeth are sharp. It's it's pretty fucked up, but it's really good. Yeah. It's like an overblown ri- image of the devil on Jack's shoulder. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't really have a light side to counteract it. He has to, like, mentally, like, keep himself in check and to not, like, give in the other side of himself. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, he comes to terms with that and he says, No, you are the reason why we lost the story. You are the reason why we haven't made any progress. And I need to let go of you. Mm-hmm. Let go of that anger. Let go I don't- of that need you to survive. Yes, exactly. I'm not sure. I think those are his exact words, but um, I'm not sure. So, we've gone into Jack, and Jack is fantastically well done in this season, in both iterations of him, when he finally, you know, gets his act together, cleans himself off, and goes back to the old gi and the sword get-up, which is a fantastic moment. But, we haven't talked about one of the newest and arguably most interesting elements of this season, Ashi. Yes. Ashi is very important because she is she is an incredibly prominent character. Like, for the first time, Jack has a real companion that sticks to with him through most of the season. And he has had friends before, too many to name, um, the Ravers, the Scotsman, oh, the yeah. Centurion, but he's never had a constant companion. Yes. And even yes. if you don't like what their dynamic became, which we will get to in a bit, it was interesting for him to have a constant foil to play off of that yeah. was not Aku. Yes, because Jack never had a traveling companion before. The most prominent secondary character in the show, the Scotsman, made sporadic appearances, but ultimately only really appeared in three separate instances. Like four episodes, because one of them was a two-part. Yeah. 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 And I love the Scotsman, but it was interesting to see him have someone else on this journey Mm -hmm. to see what he sees and experience some of the things he goes through with him. And having a traveling companion was very important to Jack's character arc because a big part of it is that he has emotionally distanced himself from the people he's trying to save Mm -hmm. because he's afraid of losing people again. And so with Ashi, he grows to a deeper emotional bond, a bond of love that he's never experienced before, and he gets really afraid of losing that. 
And so it ultimately culminates in him doing the Antep call and like giving up his sword like towards the end of the series before ultimately he is able to reclaim it. It's true calling out to the power of love within Ashi. Though. Which is, you know, a little, yeah. a little cliche, Clichéed. but... Clichéed, and I have my problems with that relationship yeah. as a whole because, well, firstly, for us to get into those problems, we have to get into where Ashi comes from. Mm -hmm. She is from this cult that calls themselves the Daughters of Aku, which I'm not sure how many members, but the primary one, the leader, pushed out seven kids and had has raised them basically from birth to kill Jack, and among other things, by killing other members of their order. And once they're all ready, she sends them out and kills them, uh, sends them out to kill Jack, who then has a struggle over actually killing humans, which is... I'm not sure they needed to do it, but I liked that they did. Right, because before now, the only people we've seen Jack kill How were I robots. Kill are robots, although there is some questionable stuff with some uh, bounty hunters he fought in Season 4, but yeah. semantics. So he comes to the conclusion that, yes, killing in self-defense is acceptable and you can have your own problems with that. He kills them, all except for one, Ashi. And for obvious reasons, she despises him. She spends her first couple of episodes traveling with Jack, quote-unquote, chained up to him like a really <laughs> loud, really whiny backpack. <laughs> And yeah, that stuff is great, but it also, once once they get into the romantic stuff, it brings up one of my first problems. That being that Jack is literally the first human contact she has ever had outside of her family, and she's decided within a few days, yes, this is the one we're going to get together and have family and all that good stuff. I'm gonna fuck the guy who killed my siblings. Who killed, yeah. who killed my siblings and basically yeah. showed me my entire worldview is wrong. Yeah, that aspect I don't think was as well thought out as uh, they could have had it. Right. I do think Ashi's character is interesting because she yes. is raised yeah. as someone who has this very narrow view of the world that has been indoctrinated onto her that she thinks of Jack as evil, like, who is good, and her like worldviews have been like twisted. So to see like her character arc and like how Jack ultimately kind of sh shows her that her way of thinking isn't the reality and kind of her slowly coming to understand why Jack is so special to the world and why like Aku needs is so, to be stopped. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty interesting character arc. And again, yeah. what Ashi represents to Jack, kind of like a new emotional grounding, like she, Ashi uh, kind of ends up being a moral conscience to Jack. Not like necessarily the most accurate term, I, but like when Jack is thinking about committing suicide, Ashi is the one who comes and tells him, no, Jack, you've done so much for, for, for so many people. You've done so much for me. You help people all the time. You need to look at that, you need to recognize that, and you need to keep living and finish the job that everyone is counting on you to do. Maybe not a moral compass, but yeah, someone yeah. whose view, I, I get what you're getting at, someone whose view is fresh enough that she can look at any situation and say, no, this is what needs to be done. This is the right thing to do. And not in a Mary Sue sort of way, a very basic, she's new to this conflict, she can quickly assess both sides and see what the best course of action is. Right. For example, Jack, don't kill yourself. Pick up that sword, let's go kick Aku's ass. Yeah, yeah, that was important for Jack, because mm. he's isolated himself for 50 years. He doesn't realize just the impact he has on people. He hasn't really had someone, like, who is there just to tell him that. And so, like, when he can realize that he's been, he ha is still saving people, you know, that's important. That's, mm -hmm. like, giving him more awareness that he has value and that he still has hasn't abandoned his purpose. Mm. It's just, mm. it might be taking him a long time to fulfill the duty, but he still has that duty to do, and he still can do that. Literally shown to us in one of my favorite episodes, not just of Season 5, but of the entire series in general. Jack and Ashi split up at one point. She goes looking for her, and along the way, she meets up with a lot of the more notable characters he's saved. 
You guys ever seen Jack save anyone? They show up in this episode. <laughs> the Woolies, uh, the Ravers from that small Germanic town, uh, the Warriors, three blind warriors that were cursed uh, when they looked into the well and wished for infinite power, the Samurai, the black fellow he met in that bar who now runs that bar, <laughs> Demongo, the Soul Stealer, that one's just straight up fan that, service, that but that was cute. It Wasn't really... Demongo supposed to be dead? Yeah, yeah somehow Demongo not dead because at the end of his episode, uh, he was in a skull and yeah. Aku crushed him. For those of you who don't remember, but I won't think about Maybe it too it's much. Just Aku it's just a, something; it comes back to life. It's just a uh, fun throwaway cameo. Uh, uh, That's not the thing to fan about service. It. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, um, so there's that and. Uh, she sees all the good that Jack has done in this world, finds him, and as we've discussed, is like, no, killing yourself is not the right thing to do because you've done so much for these people, and just this little bit more, and everyone's problems won't be solved, but the world is going to get a hell of a lot better without a coup around. Yeah, you know, I could very much relate to the the whole thing that Jack was going through in terms of that press of suicidal kind of thing, mm. and like, so... In a sense, it was very cathartic, and I think, like, they kind of nailed down, like, how Jack would kind of be after years of, in his mind, failure. Mm -hmm. He's not, like, looking at the successes he's had. He's not, like, valuing that, and he's not valuing himself. Which I think is one of the odd strengths of Tartakovsky's writing, because despite winning almost every fight he has fought throughout the entire series, Jack is by no means a Gary Stu. He's a very down-to-earth, relatable character because of stuff like that. Maybe not everyone has experienced PTSD and depression, and if you have, I'm very sorry for you, but everyone, I'm certain, at some point has had to question their purpose, question if what the path that they are going down, if that is the right path. And it's had that uncertainty, so it, it brings him down to earth and keeps him from becoming a Jesus or a Superman. He's just a mortal man who can do what needs to be done. It's just not going to be easy. It's very easy to empathize with Jack. He mm -hmm. yeah. might be a badass samurai, but he is so very human and it's mm. as fragile as the rest of us mm -hmm. emotionally. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that before on the show, as original four seasons, yeah. when Jack visits the ruins of his home, when Jack is reminiscing about anything about the past, really, you know, we see... Some of my favorite episodes. <laughs> we see his vulnerable side so often. We mm -hmm. see that he can be hurt, not just physically, but emotionally, and that and those emotional wounds cut so much deeper. Oh, quick break from the doom and gloom and PTSD. <laughs> but I love PTSD. Well, everyone does. It was, well, you fucking know what I mean. It was really well done in this season. It was great, but one of the most fun aspects of this new season, my boy Scaramouche, voiced by the legend himself, Tom Kenny. Yeah. Whip it out. Whip it out. <laughs> whip, it, whip it out, Jack, baby. <laughs> so, one of Aku's most recent assassins sent to kill Jack is this musically inclined robot, possibly gay, but fuck, I don't know. He's a robot. Very flamboyant. <laughs> but, dude, this is a future where dogs talk and yeah. warriors are blind. I'm not saying robots can't be gay. Anyway, Maybe he's just metrosexual. Who fucking knows? Anyway, he's this very flamboyant, musically inclined robot sent to kill Jack, which, one, his fighting style is very creative. He uses a flute to control weapons telekinetically, and that's amazing right there. But after his first episode, he spends pretty much the rest of the entire series, or the second half of it, that season at least, trying to get back to Aku to inform him that Jack has lost his sword. And that's very amusing on its own, because it's he's, he's just a head at this point, and it's this head rolling around, <laughs> telling everyone that he is a very important, you know, yeah. big dick OG, and he's got to go talk to Aku, but he's just a fucking head. He has I'm nothing Jack's number one assassin, baby. Uh, I'm he, Aku's number one assassin, baby. He literally gives head to a guy with a dick for a head. Which, Lord save us, even if the rest of the season had not been good, which it's amazing, but I got to hear Tom Kenny say, Wow, that guy looked like a penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Scaramouche. Uh, Tarnikovsky's always had this 
oddly juvenile sense of humor in parts, very illustrated by the Scotsman and parts of Symbionic Titan, if you've seen that. And he just brings it all to the forefront with this character, Scaramouche, who is evil, yes, but is just so much fun to watch in his bizarre antics. And at the very end, he ends up still bodiless, but being transported around on the top of an octopus. <laughs> I mean, like, in the first episode of Jack, you think, oh, this is gonna be, like, really edgy and dark. Then Scaramouche shows up. Straight up I, fucking gay musical yeah, robot. <laughs> I really appreciate a character like Scaramouche. I, one thing I really appreciate that they did with this season is that being an adult swim, they could have gone so much more gratuitous with the wives. They could have hmm. just gone so much more, like, risque with the humor and, like, the jokes and stuff. Fuck you! Yeah, blood everywhere! Jack stabbing they everyone! They could have made it quote-unquote adult. The kind of, like, adult, like, a teenager would think is adult. But no, right. Tarkovsky knew what this story where should be. Where to draw the lines yeah. and where to not go full Reki Kawahara. Yes. <laughs> this... Season 5 felt like a legitimate continuation of the series. It did not yeah. feel totally different from it at all. There I is. feel like you could go from watching the original 52 episodes to this season. It would not be jarring. Right. Yeah. There is blood now, but it's by no means excessive. Right. If a kid has gotten... If you are an adult showing the first four seasons to your kid, I... I'm pretty confident in saying you could show your kid this new season, yeah. depending on their age. You know, early teens would probably be the earliest, mm -hmm. I feel. But it's it's by no means um, does it go overboard. Yeah. It never reaches berserk levels. I mean, there's very little profanity, even. Yeah. Which is... Like, I like, think that moment I just Scar mentioned... Scarlet saying penis is, like, only, like, really yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Like, what did you do on Garden yeah. Network? And, like, the thing is, like, I still don't think if they wanted to, this probably couldn't air on Garden Network. Like, even, like, I think, Tanami Asia now, they said that they aren't gonna air season five because of, like, violence and profanity. It's yeah. really not that worse than the original yeah. Much I, I, yeah. Think, yeah, I think just from uh, what children's standards are now internationally, yeah. it's just, like, I mean, a tad too violent. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, a lot of the stuff that used to be shown on Tanami back in the 2000s yeah. wouldn't fly. Naruto. <laughs> yeah, Naruto is a good example. Yeah, Naruto would never like, be you know, <laughs> Parts of Symbionic Titan, although I'm not sure if that yeah. was on Toonami. I just no. um, well, Titan was, was on Toonami no. at one point. Uh, really? Symbionic Titan, no, it wasn't. It got, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean later, later but in yeah. him, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Mm. But not Cartoon Network. You're not Cartoon Network. Mm. But it basically it feels appropriate. Yeah. This this entire season, uh, one of the best things I can say about it, you know, we can talk for days about the art direction and just how it quite honestly gives me a stiffy, but it feels appropriate is the best thing I can say about it. It yeah. feels like the show, and it feels like it's continuing the show in some of the best ways. They set out to make a conclusion to Samurai Jack. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. And it's there. So, once Jack gets his sword back, and Tim and Ashi get together, which, okay, not only do I have issues with that, because of some of the creepiness of him being her first human contact, and I take some issue with the idea that just because two people of the opposite gender and compatible sexualities hang out a if lot, a that male they and have female to get are together, together, they have to fuck. <laughs> yeah, I take some issue with that, but I'll save that for another time. The other thing that annoys me a lot about that is in the episode where they get together, pretty much out of the blue, they do a lot of sitcom. Rhythm. I mean, yeah, I, I think episode. I think it's safe to say that episode eight is the worst episode of Samurai Jack season five. Yeah, and yeah. it still has some legitimately cool moments. I stand by, like uh, the Team Rocket uh, Tiger Goons. The fight yeah, with them was really was cool. That was cool. But there's just a bunch of like, is is that the sword on your hip, or are you just happy to see me? Oh, yeah, that episode felt the most juvenile mm -hmm. out of all the episodes in the season, honestly, because there were very childish innuendos. Yeah, this would be kind of the innuendos yeah. you'd see. This is kind of stuff that like Rock was modern life would pull back yeah. in the nineties, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it, it also feels just like filler. You really yeah. don't need that episode. Mm. Not yeah. only filler, but it comes 
almost out of nowhere. Right. Like previous episodes, they have you know they've started to take a liking to each other and travel as companions, but it's never even slightly hinted at any romantic interest between the two. Next episode, boom! Is that your sword on your waist? You just happy to see me? Yeah. Oh my god! Ah, she's <laughs> naked. What is this bullshit? Like if you took yeah. episode eight out and just did some minor tweaks to nine and ten. You pretty much not need it at all. Yeah, I, Ashi and Jack's relationship could have easily still worked as a It friendship. could have just been platonic. It yeah, it didn't have platonic. to be. But I mean, I, we understand why they did that, just because, you know, they wanted just a stronger, like, connection. Because, like, a, a romantic connection, it's, like, more believable that Jack abandons his sword mm. or whatever, you know, because he doesn't want to cut down a demonic Ashi, mm. you know? So, like, you kind of can get that a little bit. Still, I mean, so, like, still. The first time Jack has, I mean, I guess, like, Ikira, the, yeah. like, Aku's, like, facade. Of, of you mean, Aku, it was, like, literally Aku. Yeah. Three out of time, two out of three times when Jack has tried to smash, he's literally been Aku. Yeah. <laughs> so, there is that. So, they're traveling together, they're together, whoopee, they're gonna smash, whatever, fucking, they go to, oh, it's another cool thing. For those of you who remember the Guardian, big blue motherfucker, cool voice, red sunglasses, yeah. fought Jack pretty much and won. They go there looking for a time portal. It's implied that the Guardian's dead, but yeah. we don't know for certain. Aku shows up, and sick twist, we find out that Daughters of Aku is a little more than a figurative title. <laughs> Ashi is literally made up of partially... Aku demon semen? Of, yeah. Or whatever the fuck he squirted out of his finger. I don't know, maybe that's where he has, like, a part of it. Aku. Maybe that's yeah. where his urethra is. I don't know. <laughs> then how would she get pregnant if she swallows? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so she is part Aku. Aku takes over her mind, um, and Jack comes to a head because one of his most important companions is trying to strike him down, so he gives up his sword, and despite my problems thus far, in a great moment we are shown them together Aku holding up the sword, Jack kneeling on the ground, and that's just where the episode ends. Oh, that's yeah. a great shot. I want that on the side of my van. I want a poster <laughs> of that shit. Oh that God. was so cool. Yeah, I, yeah. Before we go on to like talking about the finale finale, let's just sure. talk about Aku. You know, uh, uh, initially I was like worried. I was like, thinking Greg Baldwin wouldn't be up to the task, but mm -hmm. you know, he really came through. He was, Aku was really funny in this mm -hmm. season. For those I, of you who you don't know, know, Aku's original voice actor Mako passed away in two thousand five seven. Uh, when was that? Yeah, Part way through after the last season two. Season two. Yeah. So. I want to say like 2006-ish. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And he was replaced by his understudy, who, uh, what was that name again? Greg Baldwin. Greg Baldwin, who did an excellent job as Iroh in the latter half of Avatar, but just didn't quite have it yeah. for his appearance in Korra, so I was kind of worried. And for the first episode or two, the voice is not spot on for Aku. That said, this guy does a fantastic job. Even when the voice isn't quite there, he brings the personality yeah. It's it's very much Aku's, you know, he doesn't take anyone seriously. He toys with everyone. He and likes his stuff extra thick. Mm. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's the other reason I love this guy. He did a Vine just for the final episode of the show. He's like, well, guys, uh, now that the show's over, I guess there's really only one thing left to say. Extra thick! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, he did a great job, and there are some absolutely wonderful scenes in some of the early episodes, because not only has Jack given up, Aku's also kind of gone into this funk. Right. He's giving he, himself therapy. His depression's he more funny. What I love about what they do with Aku is that, like, even though this is a darker, like, future for Jack, like, Aku himself has not changed. He's still the goofy, like, <laughs> aloof kind of, you know, he, he owns himself. Uh, one of them's wearing a sweater vest, and he's sitting on a couch giving himself therapy. Just. We don't say Jack's name in here. This, this is, a, is safe a safe place. place. We do not mention his name. <laughs> God, and then fucking his front door gets attacked and just in one of my favorite lines of the season he's like, I could use some exercise. It might break me out of my... My legs. 
slight spoilers again. And then he kills the Scotsman, who honestly, yes, sad moment, but I could not think of a better way for the Scotsman to go than roasting Aku <laughs> yeah. on his front door while his kids watch. And, they, and the Scotsman got revived anyway, thanks With to Celtic, Celtic magic, magic, bitches! Yeah. Celtic <laughs> magic! <laughs> <laughs> oh man and as much as I would have liked more Scotsman what we do get of him in this season is fantastic he's gone on to start a family with his enormous wife and they have something like 30 kids and yeah, they're all yeah. he names them all in the final episode something. yeah but... yeah and they're all you know very I'm sure traditional Scottish names um, um, and once we get to the finale they um they actually show up and it's amazing but I was glad they brought the Scotsman back and I was glad they paid him his dues and I am really glad that Baldwin pulled through on Aku. The voice is not it's not always there but the personality is so good I at least can look past it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean originally I thought they were just make Aku's appearance as fair as possible but like no they were confident in Baldwin and they gave Aku plenty of scenes throughout the season and Mm -hmm. they were always a blast. Mm -hmm. I mean Greg Mulder has been kind of the Mako stand-in for about a decade at this point, so yeah. I, I have to say, like, they should just trust him. Yeah, well, right. And I wanted to trust him. I just yeah. a didn't know about that, and b uh, as much as I like parts of Cora, he just really didn't yeah. have it yeah. in it's, those parts. Yeah. Yeah, but I love the range of what they gave it off. Right, right. It's, got it's really to see good. him like funny, depressed. We also got to see him being terrifyingly like mm. powerful. He just blows away he everyone goes full who demon tries to in attack parts. him, yeah. and it's great. Like, yeah. um, not trying to not get into too much spoiler. Uh, there's this one really well animated bit where he condenses all of his essence into a ball, shoots straight up in the air, and then just spreads out like this giant cloud of shadow and starts raining down spikes on people. Yeah. That's cool. That's Aku. That's how you do one of the most powerful demons in existence. That's kudos to you guys. Yeah. So, Aku ran the gambit of, like, emotions mm-hmm. as a character, and that was really That awesome was really fun, see. yeah. So, I was glad to see Aku's character had remained unchanged from the goofy early seasons mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing, even even in the earlier seasons, when it's a little more serious, Aku was always a fucking great villain. He's yeah. One of my favorite cartoon villains pretty much in existence. Yeah. So, now that we've talked about the characters, and now that we've talked about some of the setup for the final episode, should we uh, go into the final episode? Yes, we should. So, how do we feel about it as a final episode of Samurai Jack? They copied Gurren Laga. <laughs> for, like, <laughs> one part, and it it kind of worked. Yeah. I think they could have done better, but they yeah. could have done a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah, I think it satisfied a lot of people on two fronts. It satisfied the people who were into the Jagashi runs, and it satisfied I people who were into Sid, we must follow Tumblr on this one. It's Jashi. Jashi, okay. <laughs> no, I fucking hate that name too, don't worry. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, for those of you who like Josh, Joshie's relationship, it gets some really sweet moments. For those of you who hate it, she's not around too long anyway! Yay! <laughs> Yeah, so, um, still one of my favorite ways they've opened up any episode of Jack is you see everyone that we've seen in previous episodes that showed up and be like, hey, Jack helped me out, it was really cool, you see them all. We watch a broadcast from Aku, and it's the opening of the original show, and it's a really cute bit of self-awareness. Yeah, that was great. That was a because there's so much tension and build-up to the moment. Like, mm-hmm. you see all of Jack's, like, allies, like... Watching the TV with Braided Bet, waiting for, like, what's gonna happen. And then the opening starts playing, and you're like, God, Aku, you You piece of shit, I love you, you (laughs) bastard, it's glorious. Oh, God, and not only that, he pops up right at the very end of it with a very 90s-esque, NOT! (laughs) We're not showing you that rap. (laughs) Oh, man. And, um, so he shows his lair, you know, those frozen flames and all that, and Jack is tied up, shirtless, as usual. He's got the sword, and he's deciding how to execute Jack. And, again, another great Aku moment is <laughs> it's this great little, I, I don't know, I didn't think I'd make it this far. <laughs> uh, but then, of course, he makes the mistake of asking a possessed Ashi to strike him down, meaning that the power of Love will triumph as demons can't even compare it to the romantic power of... The power of Joshi. Jesus Christ. 
but I um, did think it was awesome to see everyone kind of come to Jack's rescue. And he and has and saved so many people right. throughout his time, and now they come and they save him. It's Gosling got to use cultic magic. Yeah. In the middle of his execution, everybody shows up. The blind warriors are riding the woolies, the centur- uh, the Romans ride in, and they've got the rockets with them, and um, the robots from that city jack help ride in on the giant robot. That was so fucking cool. And uh, the Scotsmans and his kids, who haven't showed up besides their brief appearance when the Scotsman died, show up, Scotsman flying through the air, trailing a <laughs> trail of Celtic magic behind him, with his kids riding on reindeers. It is glorious, and I loved every second of it. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, if I have one complaint with mm. the finale, is that I wish it was a double-length episode so we could have more yeah. of that battle. Mm. More can, can time. We, can we take out the Joshi episode and just, like, <laughs> it wasn't necessary. We did indeed it. Or, like, tack the three relevant bits of character and plot stuff of a jo- of the Joshi episode into another episode. Just make the finale yeah. a two-parter. Tarkovsky, mm-hmm. you're listening to me. I love you, baby. But you could have done that. But Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. it'd be nice if we had seen them, like, defeat Je- a- Aku in the future before going back to defeat past. Right, the right. Yeah. Like, kill him currently and then just go back to the past and do that as, like, a victory lap. I mean, even supposing, like, uh, there isn't, like, going to be two times timelines after mm. this, because that's one thing I thought about, but I guess the, Some the show is going on the assumption yeah. that it probably isn't going to be that, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, even, like, I felt that that would have been cool. Like, they mm-hmm. defeat Aku in the future, then they go back and pass the job, and then uh, both the world that has been ruled by Aku for so long has now been liberated, and now the past has been liberated, and that world can never know the evils of Aku. I think that would have been even more satisfying, because it makes mm. me sad to think that the Scotsman and everyone who Jack had met in the future now they just doesn't don't exist. exist. Well, yeah. people keep saying that, and you're not completely wrong, I just want to bring up a slight counterpoint to that. They exist, but it's better. Because, hear me out, they haven't had to go through Aku's bullshit. They're now free to live their lives and do whatever. So it's essentially the Steel Ball Run universe of JoJo where everyone's just gonna be born in a different setting. I mean, maybe, but, like, I guess that you have to think about butterfly effect here. Yeah. Because Aku ruling the world for so long affected events in a way that led to the birth of these specific people, you know? Mm. So without a world like ruled by Aku. Will these and, people like, still be born? Yeah, would would events all collide in the way that same people would meet mm-hmm. and give birth to the same people and then the same level of evolution for all these other like races for like the dog people and then all the alien races like Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Aku has talking dogs, and it's amazing. But that's a good point. They might not exist, but specifically, I was thinking um, at some point the Scotsman will probably still be born, is what I'm choosing to believe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Scotsman believe spell. that his ancient Celtic magic will allow him to be Oh, it's God. the gold experience requiem of Jojo's. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, pal. What do you think? Is that a Jojo reference? <laughs> Get out! Out! Out with Get me! Get out of here! here. You were the one. We who don't did. take kindly to JoJo references around here. We don't take kindly to them, me, Maurice. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, again, whether you like the show, uh, whether you like the ending or not, fucking anybody who doesn't like the show, fight me outside the school at twelve. <laughs> I'll be there. Be there. Be square, motherfucker. No, but anyone who didn't like the ending, at least it was an ending. And even if you don't like the Joshi stuff and you felt that the final battle was not to your liking, I, I still think that once he gets back to the past... And, again, slight spoilers, him and um, Ashi are about to get married. She gets erased from the timeline because without Aku, she can never exist. Getting past that, Jack's sitting on the hillside under the tree. For me, that was just such a poetic image that yeah. how could you not at least like that? It's melancholy, it's mm-hmm. contemplative, and it's optimistic. It's like yeah, it's bittersweet. It's yeah. really nice. I, I thought it was a fitting ending to Jack's uh-huh. journey. It wasn't completely happy, but it is. Uh, it ends on a bittersweet count, a missing note for the future. For Cautiously world, hopeful. Yeah, for a world that's no, no longer going to be under the grasp of Aku's evil. Right. But, yeah, uh, honestly. The honestly. world Jack has spent 50 years of his life fighting for. Mm. And... 
even more so if you count this childhood training. And the time skip itself, so at least a thousand years at this point. But yeah, uh, I had my problems with the finale, but overall, I was really pleased with it. Uh, yeah, um, good uh, job, Tartakovsky. Now where's our symbiotic season two? That, and of course, because I uh, she like the ladybugs, the ladybug has to come land on his hand, and I actually kind of liked that moment as much as I didn't enjoy their romantic relationship. That was kind of cute. Yeah, but that scene was before the Joshi, so it was okay. No, 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 no the one I'm after. Oh. The, at the, in the ending of the show, the ladybug. Oh, yeah, the ladybug. On finger. Yeah. yeah. Joshi. Which, actually, uh, for those of you who have seen the uh, ending and want just that little bit more of Jack content, someone out there, uh, sadly, I don't know who or I would plug the fuck out of their channel, has done a very clever edit where the bug lands on its finger, it does the close-up, but it's got Akui's face, it's like, I will be back, <laughs> Samurai! <laughs> oh, what a fake out that would have been. That would have been. <laughs> or, fucking, another one, someone else did a thing where um, it's the very end of the episode, they're outside of the Aku temple as is exploding, and Ashi leans over and like, by the way, what's your real name? Well, you see, my actual name is Pata! <laughs> it just cuts <laughs> off right there. <laughs> that would have been cute, too. But um, that's the other thing. We don't find out Jack's real name, and, well, that would have been nice. You know, that would have been icing on the cake, honestly. And it's already a very nice cake with the exception of the little Ashi and Jack figure on top. But putting aside that, it's a nicely done cake. It's well-assembled, well-animated. It's, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. No, Tartakovsky, where is that symbiotic titan? I know I said to fucking, we'll move on a second ago, but I'm not kidding. Do not fuck with me on this. I want my, I want my teenagers fighting kaiju, damn it. Yeah, Tartakovsky uh, has his own separate rights from Carter Network, because Carter Network wrote off theirs. If Tartakovsky has some sort of rights that allows him to make more symbiotic titan, fucking please do, do something it. with it. Like, yeah. even if it's not a full it. season like Jack, just an OVA, just something. I mean, he could easily us... he could easily wrap that up in ten episodes. Yeah, or like but, a movie, just yeah. something, please. I'm hoping for that. I think that it probably won't manifest for a while because I think he's mm. working on Hotel Transylvania the TV series right yeah. now. But I do hope that he either re- comes to return to Symbiotic Titan in the future, or he makes a new original show for Adult Swim, Tanami. Because I think that also would be sweet. I think that I, would be a great Jack was place the highest, for him. Jack was the highest cool. rated thing on Saturday nights on Adult Swim during its run. So At this it, point, it, Tartakovsky can yeah. do no wrong. He did as, as best as he could. He beat yeah. Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Not many things can say that on a Saturday night on Adult Swim. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And again, uh, for those of you who actually don't know and wondering what the fuck these nerds are talking about, if again, if you need just that little fix of Tartakovsky, check out Symbionic Titan if you actually haven't seen it. It's by Gendy Tartakovsky. It has his fingerprints. It is not Jack, but it is still very well animated. It's got a lot of great character stuff, and it's giant robots animated by the guy who made a show about time-traveling samurai. More people need this show in their lives, damn it! And shake it, bake it, booty quake it. <laughs> Still one of my favorite fucking <laughs> seeds is a teenager trying to seduce a robot, and it's not as skeezy as it sounds in context, or at least not in that way. It's ironically skeezy, but Ethan, if that's Ethan, a thing. Dat booty. Dat no. booty. And here, none of us thought Tartakovsky could do sex appeal. <laughs> I mean, ah, she also had a pretty nice booty. So. Well, yeah, but that was like after Symbionic Titan. Before yeah, that, no yeah. one thought he could do sex appeal properly. Cool. Or, besides that one episode with those oddly attractive southern bounty hunters. But yeah, um, short version. Go watch Jack. Slightly longer short version. Go watch Jack and then go watch Symbionic Titan. Slightly longer short version. Go watch Jack... Marathon Symbionic Titan after that. Quit your job and divorce your wife and sell off your children so you can then watch Tartakovsky's Clone Wars and go to work for the man. <laughs> Random question. Did Tartakovsky do Korga, the Barbarian? Yeah. Oh my god. Don't swim. Make that a TV series. That wait, is wait. Is that the thing that he did that never got greenlighted but yeah. was really cool? It's yeah. that thing that has that one episode, one like pilot episode. It's super well animated, but they didn't make a TV series of it. Mmm. 
Like, okay, now we're getting into the deep stuff, but that, uh, fucking British show, um, not Doppelgangers, but Zone did a parody of it. I only know about it because of their ZTV. <laughs> Zone did a parody of it. No, it's actually a good show. Uh, oh, The Modifiers. Oh, yeah, I, I It's that's cool, good. gothic like, British yeah. architecture and steampunk. It's really cool. Or fucking, um, it's not called Z Fighters, but it's basically if, like, the characters from Street Fighter worked at a shopping mall. That's... But we're getting into the deep end of shows that never got, uh, series that really fucking should have, but basically whatever Tartakovsky does next, I will watch and probably enjoy. Yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Tartakovsky will go in the future, now that yeah. Jack has got its ending. Yeah. And I think it's it's really nice to see that even after over a decade, a show can get an ending. And mm-hmm. now we're going to be seeing that with Young Justice pretty soon, uh, even though... Yeah. No God, one that's <laughs> on, a, on a subscription service that no one's going to use. Well, except for Young Justice. Are they also putting, like, the Teen Titans live action series on there? Maybe. I think so. Yeah. That, that might be good. What is this fuckery, and why haven't I heard about it? Oh, they mentioned it when they announced, like... Teen DC. Titans live action? Yeah, they've been trying to make it for a while. Yeah, it's not going to be based on the show. Yeah, it's just watch it be Teen Titans Go, but in live action. <laughs> oh, no. And we could get into why I don't think Teen Titans Go is actually that bad, but I think oh, I've yeah. pissed hey, enough people yeah. off it's not, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad, but... It's, it's, it's not, not that true. good, either. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely grant you that, but I think I've pissed enough people off. And I think that's it for our Samurai Jack discussion. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you Eaton and you we Lord for coming on again today to talk mm-hmm. about this great show. And yeah. yeah, definitely, guys, you gotta go seek out this show and this season if you haven't seen it yet. Samurai yeah. Jack is one of the all-time greatest animated series, in my opinion. And uh, any animation lover owes themselves to check it out. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Uh, this is Movie Mavericks signing off. Yeah, actually, Ethan, where can good people find you? On social media and the like. We need to get you a Twitter. But I, <laughs> I do have a Facebook that I almost never check and only use for the message. Yeah, but that's like your personal Facebook. Gross, I should get a real one then. If you're honestly curious, I have a YouTube channel that I haven't touched in a while and have been touching in a while and have been meaning to get back to. We call ourselves uh, Team Deathmatch. Uh, it's kind of hard to find. We don't come up very high in the search rankings. But if you're honestly curious, uh, go ahead, check it out. Me and a buddy do it. Trying to get back to it. See you there. Maybe if I can get around to it. And you, we like? Uh, yes, you can find me on Twitter at VLORDGTZ, that is V-L-O-R-D-G-T-Z. Um, aside from that, I'm on uh, my anime list under VLORDGTZ as well. And yeah, if you want to talk about JoJo, Detective Conan, really anything of the sorts, hit me up. And you can find me as Lum Ramiyasha on Twitter, my anime list and animation revelation, my main hangouts and as for the show you can find it as at manga underscore mavericks on twitter and manga mavericks.tumblr.com on tumblr and of course you can search us up on youtube our channel name is manga mavericks remember guys we need those 100 subscribers to get that custom url so please like and subscribe our content on there we're getting close we're past halfway point yeah i think after super eye patch we'll show and jump video a lot of our show and jump videos rose a bit cool think, uh, there could have been a correlation there. Yeah. It really benefited us, and I'm good for that. Hey, uh, Super Eye Patch Man, meet us outside after (laughs) school. We'll be there shirtless, and we'll be waiting for your ass to either do a beatdown or do a fight. I don't care We like you, Super Eye Patch Wolf. We just have problems with your jump video. These nerds like you. I don't know who you are, and therefore (laughs) I'm obligated to fight you. I think I showed you one of his videos. Uh, You talked about how you didn't like his jump video. Oh, I'll show you one of his good videos. But uh, as for the show, you can find us also on iTunes. Also, uh, leave us a like and a rating on there uh, and a comment. And also, send in any of your questions, comments, opinions, or talks on our shows and what you'd like to see us talk about in the future to our email, mavericks at gmail.com. We love reading your emails, your questions, and your suggestions. So please do send those in. And that about does it for this episode of Manga Mavericks at Movies, talking about Samurai Jack Season 5, and we'll see you in the next one.